Welcome back everybody. I have gotten a few questions recently about my journey through learning artificial intelligence, so I thought that would make a great video. But first, if you are new to the channel, I am Dr. Phil Tabor. I have a PhD in experimental condensed matter physics that I got in 2012 and went to work promptly for Intel Corporation as a back-end dry edge process engineer. I left there in 2015 to pursue my own ventures and I've been doing a combination of marketing, consulting, freelancing ever since. So the first step I took was to get a strong foundation in the fundamentals. So I took a free course, which was the Coursera course taught by Andrew Ng, the Stanford class on uh, machine learning. And I took that, I attempted it a couple different times, I think. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to get through because of his lecture style, but if you stick with it, you will complete the course and it is well worth it. It is actually one of the best introductions even today. I highly recommend it. Uh, so if you haven't taken it and you're looking for some place to start, that's a great place to start. Uh, you do get a certificate of completion. Nobody's ever asked to see it, but hey, if you like certificates, that's just one more thing to stick on your refrigerator. Another option is the Fast.ai course. Now, I'm not a huge fan of it. I attempted to take it. I did not really enjoy their uh, top-down approach. I'm more of a bottom-up kind of guy. But hey, that's just me. If it's something that you think would benefit you, then by all means, go ahead. Uh, many, many other people have had success with it, and I'm sure you will too. So Fast.ai, Coursera, these are great options. They're both uh, highly accessible and great introductions to the topic of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Once you have a solid foundation in the fundamentals, the next step is to pick something that interests you and really go deep on it. So the basic idea, uh, the basic topics are, you know, computer vision, natural language processing, unsupervised learning, generative adversarial networks, stuff like that. Pick any one of them that you like and really go in depth. Now I picked reinforcement learning. To me, it just seems kind of cool. It seems like it has potential to uh, lead into something a little bit more real world than theoretical, but who knows, that could be wrong, only time will tell, but that's what I picked, and I've gone really far in depth on that. So how do you really go in depth on a topic? Well, you need to get, just like you do with the basic course, you need to get an idea of the breadth of it, you know, what is the scope of the research, what are the, you know, the collection of algorithms, so to speak, so if you want to do computer vision, you would say, you know, what are the different models that people use for computer vision, and then go really deep in each one. So study the relevant literature, study the blog posts and tutorials, be very, but be very, very careful. Uh, there are, you know, uh, a whole lot of articles written about topics, and some of them may have inaccuracies, things that aren't quite worded correctly or properly or a little bit misleading and this isn't anything malicious on anybody's part it's just everybody makes mistakes and you need to be very very careful that you are um, cross-referencing multiple different things to make sure everything kind of jives and makes sense and when you see discrepancies the ultimate arbiter of truth is going to be the relevant literature on the topic there are bad papers out there but they don't stand the test of time, so you won't see them referenced. Uh, always go back to the foundational papers and use those as the arbiter of truth. Uh, and that is really a solid strategy for going in-depth on a topic. So get the breadth of it, study each individual algorithm from multiple different angles, by which I mean perhaps even use different um, frameworks. So I use this technique on this channel uh, is to approach the same thing with multiple different frameworks because not only does it allow you to have different things to present to people, say, hey, I can do this multiple different ways, but it forces you to think line by line, what does each chunk of the code do? And that is incredibly important to be able to justify to someone if you're explaining your code to them, you have to justify every single line. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why not do it this other way? You need to be able to have a reason, a good reason, mind you, for each and every one of those lines of code. So if you are a visual learner, what are some other resources for learning a lot of these topics? So I got my start after the Coursera course using uh, some Udemy courses, uh, which is kind of interesting. I took uh, the Lazy Programmers courses, which if I'm going to plug anybody else's products than my own, I can say with absolute confidence that the Lazy Programmer stuff is solid on Udemy. It's always at a good price point. He is responsive to questions. Uh, I don't like the way he writes code. I don't think his code is very good, but it is always accurate. It always works. The material he tells you, the uh, lectures he delivers are quite good. They are thorough and mathematically oriented, which is very, very good. So if you're going to take anybody else's courses, please take his. They won't lead you astray. I highly recommend it. So after picking a topic to go deep on, taking some basic classes in that, uh, what you want to do then is start thinking about marketing yourself. Now, 
Marketing may have a dirty word because it's often used to sell us stuff we don't need at prices we can't afford, but the reality is that marketing is essential for your survival and mine. Nobody is going to scream my virtues from the rooftop except me, so the same holds true for you as well. Nobody is going to try to create opportunities for you, so you must do it for yourself. Now, if you aren't comfortable getting on camera, that's perfectly fine. You can write blog articles. Uh, many people rely on Medium, but I don't actually recommend that. I uh, have a number of reasons for doing so. One is I hate the Medium platform. Uh, the pop-ups, the trying to get me to sign up for stuff really irritate the crap out of me, and I don't recommend anybody to go to, to Medium to read anything. Uh, there is quality information on there, don't get me wrong, Towards Data Science is a fine blog, it's just I don't like the platform itself. The other reason you should not produce content for Medium is that you aren't building anything for yourself. All right, if Medium goes under, if they go, you know, defunct, which, you know, don't think they won't, right? It, it happens all the time. Nobody thought MySpace would go away, but what, you know, where are they now, right? So don't, uh, so if, if, if Medium goes away, what does that leave you with? It leaves you with no SEO juice, no rankings, no nothing that you can that you can use as an asset for yourself in the future. So I don't recommend using Medium. If you must use Medium, cross post content there and link to your own blog to get some other SEO juice. SEO is a whole separate topic, but the basic idea is that Google is a giant referral engine and it uses links from trusted sources to determine the trustworthiness of information on your own domain. And so generating links from quality domains is a great way to boost your rankings of your website. But you should always be putting up content on your own website where you have some measure of control uh, and using other social media platforms to generate links to your website. But in addition to marketing yourself, the process of teaching has the effect of helping you learn. This is called the Feynman method of learning, where you try to explain it to the quote unquote dumbest possible audience. You know, can you explain it to a small child? Which means, can you break it down into simple terms? Now, how much can you break down AI? I don't know. I don't think you can break it down so that a five year old can understand it, but you can break it down uh, enough that someone who is only vaguely familiar with mathematics and computer science can kind of get the gist of it and understand what is going on. So teaching has an enormous benefit of, you know, reinforcing learning as well as putting your name out there. So marketing is a critical step for everybody's development as an AI engineer that has, you know, there are no exceptions to that. You must be marketing yourself, period. So what does that lead me in my journey? So I have, you know, taken my foundational courses, I've gone deep, deep on a topic, and I have created a YouTube channel to help market myself. Now, what does that mean for the future? So uh, my future directions will be to expand my breadth of knowledge. So I've, uh, I will continue to learn stuff about reinforcement learning and to produce more content on the channel for it, because that helps me market myself, helps me expand my reach, uh, which is certainly important. But I want to learn new things more, uh, a more broad array of topics in machine learning and artificial intelligence because, you know, being known as the go-to person for one thing is important, but what if that one thing turns out to be not so great, right? Reinforcement learning is cool, but it could very well turn out to be just a curiosity and novelty, something great for games, but no real application to the real world. It could be the case that, you know, unsupervised learning uh, turns out to be the, the end-all be-all and if I've wasted my time doing reinforcement learning, then what am I left with? So I have to learn new topics. And so how do you facilitate learning new topics? You could do the same thing over again, go really, really deep in a new thing. But I would argue, and what I'm planning on doing is something even more, uh, more public, more grand, so to speak, uh, which is like something like Kaggle competitions or starting an AI consultancy. Uh, and I'll make videos in the new year about that. I've already got some thoughts around that. So you guys can follow my journey in that and hopefully, you know, do your own journey, you know, do, do it yourself. Uh, the important, the interesting thing about the questions is that people sent me is not, uh, they asked, you know, what was my journey? Well, the really operative question is what should your journey be? You know, how can you, how can you do it? Right. Who cares how I did it? You don't have my life, right? You know, who, who the hell am I? I'm just one person. The important thing is, what is your journey going to be? I hope that, you know, mine can help inspire you. Someone who had no background in AI can kind of learn something about the topic and, you know, at least get on camera and talk about it and, and sometimes be right, sometimes be wrong. Uh, but the important thing is, what can you learn and what can you do to, to accelerate your journey to whatever goal you are shooting for? And so what was the basic process here? Just to recap, basic process is get the fundamentals, go deep, Learn it from multiple different angles. Start marketing yourself to help yourself learn better and to generate more opportunities. And then start 
branching out into other things so that you can expand the breadth of your knowledge and become a better engineer overall. So I hope that's what people were asking if in the event that they wanted to know something a little bit more specific like, you know, what do I do when I encounter math I don't know. If you check out my video on how to learn, you will learn more about my philosophy on learning. But the basic idea is I practice just-in-time learning, meaning I don't spend a whole lot of time reading textbooks or reading background information. I just start, I read enough to learn what to do to get started, and then I get started, and as I encounter problems, I work very hard to solve them, and, and if I can't solve them, I look at the information I need to solve them. And then I repeat that process over and over again until I finally fail forward to uh, getting through to my goal. Uh, I think this has the benefit of the uh, of making the fastest possible loop, uh, feedback loop between uh, reading and trying and failing. It's really where the learning happens. Uh, and it also allows you to make the quickest possible progress in actually getting something done. This is a real temptation to stay stuck in tutorial purgatory where you work through different tutorials. Oh, I need to learn how to do this. Now I need to do that. Uh, then you tend to forget stuff along the way. And so you never really get out of making tutorials, never really make anything for yourself. And so you never actually learn anything. So I try to execute just in time learning to really shorten that feedback loop and learn as much as possible as quickly as possible. And that applies to the mathematics and everything I do as well. If I encounter a sequence of equations, I will tend to try to work through them and see at least uh, sketch out the solution. Uh, and if I can do that, then I call it good. If I can't, then I will dig a little bit deeper and see if I'm missing something, if I've you know forgotten how to do something mathematically. But I don't really you know, since I'm not looking to do original research yet, I'm not really focused on the mathematics just enough to learn how to use the algorithms just enough to be dangerous, as we used to say in grad school. So I hope that was helpful. Any other comments, suggestions, questions, leave them down below. I read most of the comments. I try to reply to all of them. As I get more and more, it gets harder and harder. Uh, but nonetheless, leave them down below. Leave a like. If you aren't yet, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video.